There is a significant change that is about to take place in the lives of older citizens who are receiving SSI, SSDI and VA benefits as a result of the announcement that was just made by President Biden. Prepare yourselves for this because there is going to be a staggering increase of $2,400 in the amount of money that you receive from Social Security each month. Imagining that you wake up each and every month to discover an additional $2,400 in your bank account is a dream come true. That is not just a minor increase, it is a game changer for a great number of senior citizens and persons who rely on these benefits to make ends meet. Having more money means having more money to meet important bills such as rent, groceries and healthcare, and possibly even having some extra money to save up for some well-deserved indulgences or to save up for something special. There is a possibility that you are questioning why now, what is the reason for such a significant increase? The fact of the matter is that Vice President Biden is aware that the cost of living continues to rise. For essential goods and services such as food, housing and medical care continue to rise. He is concerned about ensuring that our elderly and veterans are not placed in a position where they are unable to meet their basic needs. He is therefore taking action in order to provide them with the assistance they require in order to live with dignity and safety. Last night, President Joe Biden shocked the nation by announcing his intention to provide a raise of $2,400 per month to all Americans who are receiving Social Security retirement benefits, Social Security disability benefits, supplemental security income, these and VA disability compensation and pensions. This announcement was made during a primetime address from the Oval Office. In a solemn tone, Vice President Biden stated that for an excessively long period of time, millions of elderly people and people who are afflicted with incapacitating infirmities have lived in poverty and gone without having their fundamental need addressed. That is a tragic situation that we are no longer able to tolerate, given that we are the wealthiest nation in the planet. This is the reason why I am making an announcement tonight regarding the most ambitious initiative ever attempted to provide assistance to the elderly and disabled inhabitants of our nation. As part of his proposal, Vice President Biden proposed that all Social Security retirement retirees receive an additional $2,400 per month in addition to the payments they already receive. When the first of the year 2025 arrives, the retirees will receive an increase of $28,800 per year as a result of this. Individuals who receive Social Security Disability Insurance SSDI, Supplemental Security Income SSI, Veterans Affairs Disability Compensation and Veterans Affairs Pensions would all experience the same rise of $2,400 a month. In the case of a normal retired couple, this will be a game changer because it will put an additional $57,600 in their pockets each and every year. According to Biden, who was greeted with cheers by Democratic members of Congress who were present, the percentage of elderly and disabled people in the United States who are living in poverty will decrease by more than 75% as a result of this. More than 5 million households to be entirely lifted out of poverty and at long last make it possible for our citizens to retire with genuine dignity. Republicans who had already voiced their opposition to the proposal, many of whom had already spoken out against it, were directly challenged by the president, who referred to it as unaffordable liberal fairy dust. They were accused of hypocrisy by Biden for their support of substantial tax cuts for companies and the wealthy, while at the same time they took advantage of senior citizens and people with disabilities. Uh, so please don't give me all of these stuff since I can't afford it. It is only natural that we have the financial means to finally take care of those who have taken care of all of us. For those individuals who, through their sweat and labor, constructed this wonderful nation, for whom we fought in our wars to secure our freedoms, individuals who persevered through adversity and suffering in order to provide a better life for their children, the generation that was the best, our mother and father. And we owe our grandparents. They made it possible for us to have everything we have and nothing more. There is a debt that we owe to them to ensure that their final years are not filled with endless sacrifices to get by poverty and misery. It is our responsibility to make sure that this does not happen. Supporters of the idea are ecstatic, claiming that it will be a much needed financial lifeline that has the potential to completely improve the lives of elderly people and those with disabilities. At this time, the average benefit that a retiree receives from Social Security is approximately $1,800 per month. With an additional $2,400, they are able to go from a position that is much below the poverty line to that of the middle class. It is common for people who receive SSI and SSDI to live much closer to the poverty line, which means that the increase may have an even greater impact on them. This literally means that you will no longer have to make difficult choices between the costs of food, rent, utilities and healthcare said Nancy Lee Mond, Executive Vice President of the American Association of Retired Persons, ARP. There have been far too many older people in our society who have been suffering in silence for far too long, with their savings depleting and growing bills eating away at their limited incomes. According to every definition of the word, this proposal has the potential to save lives. Similar expressions of relief were heard from disabled soldiers who were finally able to receive the financial support they require and deserve. Far too many of us have been left behind, unable to make ends meet, said Jeremy Butler, Executive Director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. After serving our country and being left permanently disabled, we have been left behind. By increasing their benefits, handicapped veterans will be able to move out of poverty and into the middle class. 
making it possible for us to concentrate on our family and on enhancing the quality of our lives rather than being always stressed about money. It goes without saying that any proposal of this scope and expected cost raises a great deal of issues regarding the source of the forthcoming funds. During his speech, Vice President Biden presented two key alternatives for pay force. The first of these is a new tax on the income of billionaires that the president intends to levy at a rate of 25% on all annual income that billionaires make from investments, businesses and any other sources. The ultra wealthy are already able to avoid paying regular income tax rates on a significant portion of their income, which comes from sources such as investments and business ownership. Instead, paying a lower capital gains tax rate on certain income streams, which can be as low as 15 to 20 percent of the total income. Biden contends that it is inherently unfair for individuals with billions of dollars and multiple millions of dollars to pay lower tax rates than those who work hard, such as teachers, firefighters and police officers. The income tax that he proposes for billionaires would impose a flat rate of 25% on all income that is greater than $1 billion and it would not permit any special exemptions or loopholes. During the process of setting out the justification, Vice President Biden pointed out that billionaires like as Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos can currently wind up paying lower tax rates than many families who fall into the middle class. And it is not merely unethical to do so. The economic system is awful because it deprives the working people, who are the ones who genuinely produce value of their rightful share. There should be no billionaire who is subject to a tax rate that is lower than that of a police officer or firefighter. According to projections provided by the White House, this new tax will bring in more than $1 trillion in additional revenue over the course of 10 years by ensuring that billionaires finally pay their due part. They claim that this is an essential first step toward redistributing a little portion of the wealth that has been increasingly concentrated at the very top of the economic hierarchy and restoring the progressive nature of the tax system. In contrast to the struggles that working folks have been going through over the past couple of years, billionaires have seen their pandemic profits and collective wealth climb dramatically, according to Biden. They are in a position to easily afford a small portion of their enormous fortunes to be directed toward providing for those who are wholly responsible for the establishment of this nation. The elderly and disabled members of our military, it is being referred to as the End Global Corporate Domiciliation Act, and it is the second funding mechanism that the President has proposed. The purpose of this new rule is to limit the ability of firms based in the United States to conceal their profits from the Internal Revenue Service IRS by relocating their legal domicile to offshore tax havens, which is typically only done on paper. Over the course of the previous 15 years and more, corporate tax inversions, as they are commonly referred to, have enabled over 60 big companies in the United States to avoid paying an estimated $800 billion in taxes. Biden contends that this tax avoidance deprives the government of essential resources and leaves domestic workers and smaller enterprises with the responsibility of compensating for the lost revenue. When giant corporations make all of their money here, pay no taxes here, and conceal their earnings in Bermuda or the Caymans, that is not right, Biden cried to the shouts of the audience. Despite the fact that everyone else is required to pay their fair share of taxes, there is no justification for businesses to continue to avoid paying taxes. According to this new rule, any company that conducts the majority of its actual business activities within the United States would be considered a domestic corporation and would be obligated to pay all taxes on its earnings made in other countries because of this classification. Putting an end to this global domiciliation game is expected to bring in as much as $600 billion over the course of 10 years, according to the totals of taxes that have been avoided in the past. If we just compel companies like Amazon, Chevron, Google and others to disclose the truth,